Hey subscribers and watchers, what's up? It's me, Vivs here from SlideNerd. Today, I'm going to talk about how we can add tabs in Material Design with a library. In the previous video, I talked about it with the help of the sliding tab layout. And at the end of the video, if you remember, I ran into an issue where I could either display the ripple effect or I could display the tab indicator. And I had asked you guys to help me out on that. And there was one man in the comment section of video number 27 who gave me a nice solution. Andre Albert Silva Van Donen. Thanks for the post here. If you take a look at how he has done it, he has said that simply set the indicator colors and set the background color and keep everything else the same. Also modify the ripple file a bit, otherwise it won't work. So let me explain what the solution was and then we move to our custom library implementation in this video. Ripple effects are needed at two places, one over here in the tab other in the recycler views custom row. So I have made two separate files item bg.xml and tab bg.xml which are ripple effects for both the files. So here in the drawable v21 folder again I have both of them. If you take a look at item bg.xml it is the same thing which we have discussed in my earlier ripple effect video. If you take a look at tab bg.xml I simply added a mask here and I have the drawable as color white specified for that mask. Now notice carefully I have not added any selector over here like I did in the item bg.xml because I found out that the selectors are not working with the tabs and if you go to the custom tab view here I have added my background for the custom tab view as tab underscore bg over here. Now all I have to do is go to my main activity and inside that I have removed the custom tab colorizer rather what I have done is set the background color as r.color.color primary for the tab and set the indicator colors as r.color.color accent and this gives me the perfect effect that I'm looking for in material design. So once again you go here you click there's a ripple and you select there it's a tab you can swipe and as you can see it works perfectly. So this completes how you can make a custom tab with icons using the sliding tab layout for material design and definitely thanks to the guy who posted the solution over there on the forum. Now let's discuss how we can do this with a library. So I have constructed these tabs inside our main activity with the sliding tab layout. Now I have added the code on github.com forward slash slide nerd. Now to make the same tabs with a library, I'll have to remove this code which I'm not going to do because I'm sure that you guys want to refer that. Rather what I've decided is that if you go to menu here and click on tabs with library, I will launch a new activity where that work is going to be done. So here is our activity using tab library where I plan to add tabs with the help of the material tabs library and a view pager. If you take a look at the layout file for that activity, this is what you see. There's a relative layout and there's the app bar which is included. In terms of code, we have simply created a toolbar instance and set it as our support action bar. And don't forget to call set display home enabled true. Now at this point, let's go and find our library. All you gotta do is go here and go to androidarsenal.com. Here in the search section, if you go simply type tabs at the top, you're going to come across several libraries out here that support making tabs. At this point, the one library that I can see is material tabs that lets you make material tabs as its name suggests. Simply click open and you go to the GitHub link from where I was originally there in the first place. So this is the library that we plan to use for our tabs. So there are two types of tabs as the library says for the text tabs use this, for the icon tabs use this. Let's test out the text based tabs first. So first thing that we need to see is how these tabs are going to look and then what are the limitations. So here it says actually this library has some limitations. There is no selector animations in this and these problems are currently in development. Maybe by the time you're watching this video this is already fixed but I just wanted to inform you what's going on. So these are the tabs that we have. There are fixed tabs 1, 2, 3. If it goes more than that they become scrollable. So this is how it looks which is pretty close to what we achieved with the sliding tab layout. If you go down further, you can see these are the scrollable tabs that the person is talking about. So now let's take a look at how we can add the compile time dependency for this library. All you gotta do is go here, go down to your build.gradle file, inside the dependencies list, simply add our new dependency for new free tabs and let's rebuild the project. All is good and the gradle build has successfully finished here. So let's go ahead and add the code for the textual tabs. So all you got to do is take this part for the textual tabs here where it says your primary color, your text color. Let's customize those things later. We go here straight to our activity using tabs. Here we add this and as you can see it says app namespace is not found. Just press alt enter and the namespace is added here 
at the top which is XMLNS app over there. Now the next thing that we need to do is obviously add our view pager and also we got to make sure that the tabs that is the tab host comes below our app bar. So now I have modified things a bit. I have changed the root layout to linear layout and with the orientation of vertical to avoid some headache. There you go with the app bar right below the app bar automatically comes the material tab host and below that is our view pager which has a height of 0 dp and a weight of 120k that it's going to take up all the available space. Now if you go here to our layout height is 48 dp and it is this person who has actually specified the height here and somewhere down I think he has said that he's working on making it wrap content. I'm working on using wrap content instead of 48 dp. So make sure that you take care of that statement when you're writing your layout code. Now let's go and customize the accent color. So at this point I have simply specified the app accent color as my color accent primary color as the color primary and text color as the color white over here. Go to the design tab you should be able to see this is our app bar this is our material tab host and then there's our view pager. If you don't see this and there's some rendering issue then rebuild your project before you proceed. So now let's take a look at how we can code this to support our textual tabs. All you have to do is go and create the variables inside your activity using tab library. Initialize those variables here by using the find view by id method. And we need to implement a listener which is material tab listener. Once we do that, we have to overwrite certain methods. Press alt enter. Implement the method. It says on tab selected, reselected, unselected. So when the tab is selected or whatever happens with the tab, you're supposed to process that inside your view pager. Let's take a look at how we do that. At this point, it's also obvious that I need two things. One, a fragment to display inside each view pager and two, an adapter to display the content of this view pager. If you remember, our main activity already has a public static class my fragment. So what I'm going to do is put this class in a separate file and reuse it inside my activity using tab library as well. So let me do that. The next thing I need inside my other activity is the fragment state pager adapters object so that I can get the right page for the right position. So all I have to do is copy paste the code here for the adapter and modify it accordingly. Now remember you have to import this. It says import class. To go here again we have to import the fragment manager as well. Make sure that it is Android support v4 app fragment manager. Again when you press alt enter for the fragment always make sure it's the support fragment which is getting imported because there are so many people who ran into issues in the comments importing the wrong fragment class. Now let's return the object of our fragment, myfragment.get instance and pass the number inside to return an object at the specified position. The number of tabs we have is 3 for now and the page title is going to be from the strings.xml file and that would give me the perfect tab at the perfect position for the get page title. Now that this is over, let's take a look at how we can integrate this with our material tab host. If you come back and refer the documentation of the library, you will notice that at this point they have simply set the adapter here and notice this view pager dot simple on page change listener in other words when the page changes inside the view pager you want to update that change in your tab host and if you go down here when the tab changes you want to update the view pager now this is exactly what people used to do before the material design tabs came out and notice this step as well where they have a for loop and they are taking the pages from the adapter and simply adding the each, each tab with the icon and the tab listener for that. First, let's set the adapter for our view pager. Now let's add a listener to the view pager to be notified when the page changes. We can do that by saying view pager dot set on page change listener new simple on page change listener. And of course, this is going to be an anonymous implementation over here. So all we have to do is override the right method, which is probably on page selected over here. So within this, we will update our tabs. So now when the user swipes the view pager, the current position of that page will be provided here inside the on page selected. We will simply update our tab host to set the current item at that position. Now we go down and we do the reverse as well. That is when a tab is selected from the tab host, we want to update our view pager to scroll to that page. We can do that by saying view pager dot set current item material tab dot get position. Now the only step that we need to do is add all the tabs or pages to our tab host. So now we write a for loop. We loop all over the adapter's number of pages that it has. Simply call tab host dot add tab, and there we make a tab host dot new tab, where we set the text as the adapter dot get page title of i, which is explicitly gonna call this method get page title and pass the position i over here. 
to get the right title from our string array and if you go at the top here and you also set the tab listener this which is basically the material tab listener that we implemented here at the top now at this point if we run this we should be able to see our textual tabs let's take a look at that so at this point you run the app there's our pre lollipop on the left lollipop on the right go to the menu here click tabs with library at both places and bam there's our tab one two three and you know what's the best part click over here take a look at that the ripple effect is working on the tabs even on pre lollipop devices same thing repeats here the lollipop as well giving you a consistent appearance so at this point you know exactly what to do use the sliding tab layout or the material tabs library i leave the choice up to you at the same time before we finish the video let me show you how to add icons as well which is going to be just a very simple step in this whole setup also to show you scrolling tabs here as a small experiment i have modified the string array to have three more elements that is four five six inside the main activity i have returned a count of three which means only the first three tabs are going to be considered but inside our activity tab library i have returned six here that means there are going to be six tabs at this point if you run the app what you see is something like this these are the scrolling tabs or scrollable tabs as you can call it which is seen with the help of this library now let's take a look at how we modify this library for icons here if you take a look at this code this is for icons here the only difference is instead of using app text color there's app icon color here and there's an app has icons equals to true so let's add these attributes and modify our code to support icons instead so there you go there's my modified layout with the icon color and has icons equals to true now let's take a look at how we can change the code to support icons the majority of the changes for adding icons is inside our view pager adapter here i have an array that supports the icons that i need now notice carefully that i have six items being returned in the get count indicating that my tab has six items but i'm having only three icons here this can cause an error so let's first change this to three now the next thing that we need to do is add our method here called get drawable now notice that there is no at the rate override annotation here which means this is not a standard method all i have to simply do is say get resources dot get the drawable out of that and notice that i have not made any changes to the get page title as well because even though this returns the title we don't plan on using it now all we have to do is go to the top where we had our adapter being considered for looping over and here instead of saying set text we are going to say set icon here there you go set icon and we are going to use that method which was get icon i believe we simply say set icon is adapter dot get icon now at this point let's run the app and find out if we can see the icons or not now when you run it on our lollipop and post pre lollipop devices here you simply go to the menu start the other activity and bam there's our material tab host with icons now if you click on that the best part is that the icons are white in color meaning that you can customize the color of them and the ripple effect is also seen on both lollipop and pre lollipop devices which makes this library a pretty good library out there here is the final case we have nine icons that are replicated thrice each if you go down to the get count i have returned nine here to see the effect of scrollable tabs with icons now if you go to our pre lollipop and our lollipop device simply launch to the next activity and bang take a look at that there's our pre lollipop based scrollable icons with material design tabs and our lollipop based scrollable icons so this library is perfect for creating tabs which means you don't have to use the sliding tab layout but this is what my opinion is what do you think about this please let me know in the comments below in the meantime if you like what you saw please like this video share this video subscribe to slide nerd and let us know your thoughts in the comment boxes below thanks for watching i'll catch you guys in the next video have a nice day